Okay, we're getting ready uh, to fit the pistons, which is uh, great news as we're getting on with things. So I've got some Emgo pistons. Now, I don't think it matters too much what pistons you get. That's a sort of general uh, observation. Um, what does matter is what um, piston rings you get. So these are Emgo pistons. Um, I'm not sure who actually makes these, but they're made in Taiwan. Um, but they seem fine. Ours are plus 20. They're all marked. Um, and they have new uh, circlips for the gudgeon pins, which is obviously very important. And uh, I just mentioned it, I'll probably mention it several times again, but they've got different size cutaway on either side. And so the slightly bigger cutaway, that's for the inlet valves, which are bigger. So that goes towards the back of the engine and the smaller exhaust valves go to the front. I mention that because there's no arrow or anything on the ground and sometimes it's easy to kind of forget and put the wrong way around. Which it's not going to do much good. Okay, so we've got the pistons, gudgeon pins. Then we've got the, um, these are Omega piston rings. I think the two main types you can get, I think, are Omega and Gertz, Gertz rings. There might be others, but those are the two that I know of that I tend to use in, in the Trident because, as I think we said before, they do have a tendency to smoke quite a lot, Tridents. And so you want to do everything you can to try and minimise that. And the main thing to do with that is um, having good rings. So ours are, of course, are a plus 20 set. I know they say club rings, that's whatever, but they are basically Omega rings. So what have we got? It tells us nicely on the package uh, which groove each of the rings go in. So that goes in the top groove, that's the middle groove, and that's the oil ring for the... Uh, for the, on the third ring, that's the oil ring. That's fine. But what it doesn't tell us is which way up they go. Because there's a groove, I know, in that one, and there's a bevel on that one. That one is uh, equal. Like, it's, uh, you know, it, it's the same either way up, but the other two aren't. So which way do they go? So, thankfully, uh, when we've received a package, it says their top is a plain ring, which can fit any way around, because it doesn't matter which way up it goes. It's the same both sides. The second is fit the step facing down because it's got a little groove in it. So that groove goes to the bottom. And the oil, the bevel facing the top of the piston. So the little the little curved edge to the piston faces uh, the piston ring faces upwards. Okay. Um, so always make sure you've got that information. You know, does it matter which ring it goes in? Well, it definitely does which groove it goes in, um, but also does it matter which way up it goes? Sometimes you'll find a ring and it'll have top, and, you know, hope written on it, which is great, but for some reason, these don't. You know, even, even when it is important which way up is top. But we've got that info. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to put the piston rings on the pistons and as I famously broke a piston ring last time I did an engine, which is the first piston ring I've ever broken, um, then I'm going to put them on just using my fingernails because when I broke the ring, I was using a bespoke piston ring fitting tool. <laughs> so much for that. And that, that snapped the ring. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go into sort of the whys and wherefores too much, but... Um, you want decent piston rings, and um, because on these engines, this is this is my understanding, is we've got like an older style uh, uh, cylinder. Um, these piston rings, we want them to sort of they to, to really cut into the to the sides of the the, the piston wall uh, to get a good oil seal. They need to they need to cut in, and that's why um, you you uh, you want to be basically kind of fit them dry. Uh, in the uh, in when we first fit them, because when the engine starts, we actually want them to go up and score kind of the the cylinder walls to to take any sharp edges off. They're actually, you know, these these rings are big mothers, if you like, and they're big and thick enough to 
to do that to the piston wall to get it really nice and smooth so that they will then seal. On a more modern engine, this is what I understand, then we have things like, what, what do they call it? Um, they've got a special name, a sort of a special home, what's it called? Oh, I can't remember now. But it's incredibly smooth, the way the, the cylinders, they're already incredibly smooth, much smoother than the cylinders that we're going to put in. And so they're kind of like pre, pre uh, sort of cut, if you like. So the piston rings don't have to do that, that, um, sort of knocking off the burrs, if you like, of the cylinder. They're already done. Pla platinum, platinum hone, is it? I think it's called something like a platinum hone. And it's incredibly smooth. But for reasons that I'm not quite sure we can't do that, maybe it's to do with the cylinder liners, I don't know. Or I, I really don't know. But for our purposes, we want big fuck-off piston rings that are going to go up and down and, and really hone those, uh, those balls. Um, and so that's why we need these really good rings. Um, and we need to run it in properly. We need to fit these dry. So because if, if they if they if they're um, over lubricated, instead of taking those, instead of sort of scoring the bore and taking the high spots off, it'll actually just slide over those high spots and won't knock them off. And then you'll you'll leak oil. So that's why we actually want, when we start the engine, we actually want it to go up and down and sort of take off those high spots and get it all nice and flat as possible. Okay. So we're starting, we're starting with the bottom ring, the oil ring, oil control ring, and that's got a spring inside it. So we take the spring off and that will have a little wire somewhere. We'll just find it in exactly the right place. And uh, let's have a look. Yeah, so we can just either completely open it or just as I've done, slide it partially open there, put it down over the piston till it gets to the third groove, the oil control groove, and then close that spring up again over the wire. There we go. Then we've got the actual ring itself and we need to fit it with the bevel towards the top of the engine. So let's see if I can get this. This is appears to be the bottom. If I can get that to focus for you. Okay, it's flat. And that's the top. And you can see this edge where my fingernail is. That's got a very slight bevel on it. It's not flat. Okay, a little curve there. So that's the top. So that, that's the bevel rather, so that's going to go to the top. So we've got the spring in. Yeah. And so then we're going to put the ring in. Just double check I've got it, yeah. Get the old uh, thumbnails, they're going to love this because it's, these are always bloody strong. Just lower it down. Come on, sit you, sit you ring. Are we sitting? Yeah, because these should be pre gat these rings. But you never take anything for granted. I'm just checking that <laughs> they are actually, you know, it is actually going to close <laughs> when we put the clamp on. Right, good, yes. So then we've got the uh, sort of second compression ring, and that should have a, a little groove as you like and focus focus please there we are and uh, again where my thumbnail is uh oh that's looking pretty dirty but never mind on close up uh there's a groove which obviously on the top of the ring or rather uh, okay the top of the ring there's no groove so uh, following our instructions that groove goes downwards so again the old trusty thumbnails over the ring over the first groove. Come on. And there we go. Into the into the second groove. Yeah, good. Then we have the top ring, the first compression ring. And it says it doesn't matter which way up this goes because it is uniform. So 
it's um, it's just flat on both sides. So it doesn't matter which way up it goes. Okay. That's that is for this set of rings. Of course, it could be depending on what rings you buy. Don't forget they're all different. That's why you need to double check. Also, I like these rings. There we go, that top ring's on. I like these because the oil control ring is that, this bottom one is two-part with that spring in the middle. Sometimes they're three-part rings. You get like a little bottom ring, then a spring, then a top ring. And I hate them because they're so fiddly. So, um, and it's much harder to fit the pistons because when you put the piston ring clamp on, um, like if you've got the clamp just over this ring, it will still clamp it. But on the three-part ring, you have to have the clamp right down over the bottom of the ring because otherwise the bottom bit of the ring will come out. And as we'll see later on, you own, you can only just clamp these rings. You know, it's, it's the, the, the room available, you, the piston ring clamp can only just go onto that ring. Then what we're going to do, I'll, I'll do this later, I'm going to turn the, the gap to uh, 120 degrees. So one's there, one's there, and then we'll have one. Where's the gap gone? Over there. So I've got one there, I've got one there, and I've got one there. So there are, have I got that on camera? Yet? So I've got one there, I've got one there, I've got, so they're about 120 degrees. Now, that's what I normally set them at, but um, there are various things. Number one, you do need to check your manual because sometimes it will dictate, it will say where to set those gaps. For instance, my Kawasaki, uh, it says set the ring gaps directly in line either side um, of the piston, which is like the big no-no, as I was always brought up. You know, you never have the gap sort of in line with the, with the um, front or back of the piston. But the Kawasaki says, to actually set them like that. And number two, um, be aware that the rings turn in use. So no matter where you set them, it doesn't matter that much because they will spin and they'll, they'll end up where they want to end up. I don't know if they keep spinning uh, in use. I really don't know or whether they spin and then decide to stay where they are. I don't, I honestly don't know. Uh, but they do, they do move. I, you know, even an engine, I've, you know, I've built engines and something's been wrong and I have to take it apart again fairly soon. And uh, oh crikey, the, the rings have moved, you know, after, you know, after not long at all. Right, okay, so the rings are on that. It's all fairly drama-free. So, so, so the, so the next two is going to be a nightmare, basically. Um, so I'm going to, I'll go off camera, I'm going to put the rings on the next two pistons, just like that one. And then we'll get ready to actually fit the pistons on the conrods. Okay, so uh, we're in the middle of fitting the pistons. I've fitted the first two pistons, and now I'm getting ready to fit the third one. I've cut off the protective uh, the stuff I put on the conrods, um, and I'm so glad to have got rid of that because it makes it makes the whole bike look rubbish, you know. But obviously they're very necessary to protect the conrods, and what I actually did. This time was I got the, those plastic freezer bags and I put them around the conrods and then put some masking tape around the, the bags. And due to the shape of the conrod, there was no way they were going to come off. And that actually protected them really well because there was like air in the bag. And then to get them off, I just cut the bag and off, they, off they'd come. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably use that method again because, you know, you can use like cardboard tubes and that, but... When you rotate the engine, they tend to bobble about and fall off or whatever or get in the way. So, in fact, that was a that was a good method. Protected them totally, and you know, didn't come. They didn't come off, and and then when I wanted to take them off, they come off really easy. Anyway, so we've got the uh, piston, and I've put one of the new circlips in the inside end of the piston. Um, Obviously, always, always use new circlips and always double treble check that the circlip has seated properly in the, in the groove. So then I'm putting that in. And then I've got the uh, gudgeon pin. And what I've done is I've oiled everything with uh, 
assembly lube, but only a little bit because, of course, what I don't want to happen now is to get assembly lube all over the pistons, the outside of the pistons, and then, obviously, when we try and run the bike in, you know, assembly lube is probably the worst thing to have on the pistons and on the barrels, on the bores, because, you know, it, it will it will just allow the rings to slip and they won't bed in. So circumspect uh, amount of um, assembly lube. And then I'll put, I'll, uh, I haven't heated the pistons up because I think we should be okay. There, the gushing pin just slips in there. And then hopefully I'll get this on and then hopefully I can just feel where the gudgeon pin is on the con rod. Oh, yes, there it goes. And then we just push it in. And then to get the last bit in, I use my specialist gudgeon pin pusher. So what I've got is a little screwdriver here, which is just uh, the right size. So it sits on the gudgeon pin but slips inside the piston. So I just push that in to get the gudgeon pin fully home. And it's now exposed the, uh, the little groove for the circlip. And I've put, um, we've got a rag around this end, just in case I drop the circlip. But these are good, you know, they're made with this little grip there. Introduce the top of the of the clip, and then in goes the rest, and then my special circlip insertion tool, which is the same little screwdriver, and just push it in. And again, I'm just going to make sure, doubly, triply sure that the, all the ring is in the groove, which it is. Yeah, good. And there we are, and we have. The pistons insert the pistons on. I've got some assembly lube. You might be able to see it just there. I'm going to wipe it all off. I'm going to wipe. I'm going to take the gloves off, which I've got assembly lube on, and I'm going to thoroughly clean the pistons down with white spirit to make sure there is no assembly lube on the outside of the pistons. Okay, but uh, and then we'll obviously we check them, check that they're all rocking nice and perfect. Those they're not loose, <laughs> so you don't want them loose. And they're just nice, uh, turning nicely. So. Pistons on, I'm just going to wipe them down, get rid of any assembly lube that might have got on the outside. Oh, and of course, I'm checking again that I have got the uh, pistons round the right way with a larger cutout facing the rear of the engine, the inlet, smaller cutout towards the front of the exhaust. Yeah, check. And so pistons are on, fantastic, really happy, because the next job is the big job, which is putting the, the barrels on. When we get the barrels on, wow, I feel like, you know, the, the engine's really getting there then. You know, we've been faffing around for a bit and then suddenly, poof, it all starts really coming together quickly.